Welcome back to Food Atheist, the internet's favorite anti-diet vegan test kitchen where we don't moralize food or bodies. Today, we are making vegan pizza. Vegan cheese sucks. All right, let's put it out there. It's bad, it's terrible, it's sticky, tastes like glue, it's bad. I'm sorry, I don't wanna like bash any vegan cheeses out there, but Daya, your cheese is bad and I don't like it. <laughs> but we today are going to make the best vegan cheese that exists in the whole universe. So basically the history behind this vegan cheese that we are making. I studied abroad in Peru some time ago. And in Peru, there aren't that many vegan options. Like it's literally the home of shish kebabbed guinea pigs. But I had stumbled across this vegan farmer's market and I got a slice of vegan pizza and it was mind blowing. It was the best homemade cheese I'd ever tasted in my whole life. And I asked them what it was made out of and they told me it was made out of coconut milk. And ever since then, that was like five years ago, I've been on a quest to find coconut based cheese and I have found it. So today we're gonna make that. I'm gonna start by making dough for the pizza crust and then we'll make the cheese while the dough is proofing. So you're gonna start with one cup of flour. And you're gonna add one package of active dry yeast. And you're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Give the yeast something to munch on in there. Whoops. Three quarter teaspoons of salt. I feel like the idea of making pizza dough is really scary to most people, but it's actually not that hard. And this one only takes a half hour to proof. Then you can just stick it in the oven. You're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. And three quarters of a cup warm water. The temperature of the warm water is supposed to feel neutral on your skin, so run it over your like forearm for a little bit until it doesn't feel like anything's running over your wrist, I guess. Yep, can't even feel it. All right, get that in there. And you're gonna stir it around to combine. So this activates the yeast, gets it going. So then you add slowly one more cup of flour. I bet you've been admiring my um, lovely apron here. This is from Margaret Russell. She gifted this to me for my birthday and hand wove the entire thing. Can you imagine? That's a lot of weaving. It's so much weaving. There's like, you have to hand place each and every thread of this to weave it and it, oh, so much time was taken and it's the most beautiful thing ever. I'm gonna wear it every time I make bread because we used to make bread together pre-quarantine. I got all these pockets too. I can like have olive oil in my pocket and I can have salt in my pocket. Yeah, I feel just like loaded and ready to go. Okay, keep adding your cup of flour. It is 75 degrees here in Maine and I was like, why not get our apartment even hotter? and preheat our oven to 500 degrees until we're melting. <laughs> okay, whenever they say like slowly add things to something, I don't do it, it never happens. I'm too impatient. Hashtag Aries Kitchen. I feel like there are some cooking rules out there that just exist and don't need to exist anymore. And I think slowly adding flour to things or powdered sugar is one of those things. But correct me if I'm wrong, I'm only an amateur cook. So you got your mostly combined ball of pizza dough and you wanna take your other bowl, put some olive oil in your other bowl. Boop. Rub it around with your hands cause you don't have a, a food brush and you don't believe in single use kitchen appliances. Nice. Okay, then you stick your uh, ball in here and you're gonna let it hang out in there for a half hour. I've seen them put like blankets over them like you tuck it in to sleep, but it's like, oh, good night. I think that's what you do. I don't know. I don't know why you do it, but this might be another one of those like practices that is stupid now. I don't know. 
Now it is time to make the cheese. All right, this cheese is the best cheese I have ever made in my entire life. And I've made a lot of vegan cheeses. People are always like trying to become vegan and they're like, what about the cheese? And I'm like, I know there's no good vegan cheese. I feel you on that. So this is like the best recipe. Just please believe me, it's so fucking good. And it starts with coconut milk, the star of all of my dishes that I've made so far. So you're gonna crack open your coconut milk. Stick it in it, whatever you're gonna cook it in. You're gonna add a quarter cup warm water. We're gonna add a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. So there are some weird ingredients in here and I'm gonna explain what they do and where you get them. My aunt Shirley recently told me that I haven't been explaining where you buy these specialty products in the grocery store, which is totally valid. Like I'm assuming all of you are already vegan, which is not fair. So I'm gonna go through and explain what these products are. Nutritional yeast, tastes like cheese. It's in a powder and you find it in the spice section. I'd say that 90% of grocery stores have this by now. Hannaford's, Shaw's, I don't know any other grocery stores because I live in Maine. You're gonna add four teaspoons of agar agar. This is a very weird ingredient. It's basically like a vegan gelatin. Gelatin's made out of bones. Agar powder is made out of seaweed another amazing seaweed product. It thickens things. You can use it to make jelly or pudding or whatever. Gelatin used to be trendy back in the day. It's not anymore. Yeah, this thing is great, but you can't get it many places and it's kind of expensive. So I don't go through this very quickly, but you can get it at a natural food store or on Amazon in bulk. And it only gets activated by heating it up. Also for this recipe, I'm someone who fudges measurements. Oh shit, how many was that? Four or five? No! The point is I usually fudge measurements as I probably just did right then. <laughs> and uh, this is not the time to do that because it will turn out really wonky. So half teaspoon of garlic. And you're gonna add a tablespoon of all purpose flour. This recipe is from Hidden Veggies. She makes a food, uh, she makes a food blog and it's really great for vegan cheese recipes. I kind of adapted it a little bit and one of the ways I adapted it was by adding flour to it. So many vegan cheeses don't burn, you know, like the, like the brown layer of golden goodness that happens on the top of cheese. So I'm adding flour to make that happen. One and a quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm gonna put in this little thing, okay. We're gonna turn our cheese on here and you're gonna wanna whisk the shit out of this, okay? It burns pretty easily, gets clumpy, so always whisking. So you're gonna wanna bring this mixture to a boil and once it boils, you can bring it down to like low heat for five minutes and you're gonna let it keep slow boiling. So the agar is gonna do its thing and it's gonna start thickening it up. Okay, while well, that's boiling, Another weird ingredient we're adding is tapioca flour. This gives it that stretchy texture. You want two tablespoons and one teaspoon of the tapioca flour. And you wanna mix it separately with a quarter cup of water. This you can find like hidden amongst the gluten-free flours at most grocery stores. Arrowhead Mills. You're welcome, Aunt Shirley. Ooh, it already looks good. Uh, I've made this recipe before in case that wasn't obvious. Once you add the tapioca flour mixture to this, you are gonna get mixing real fast, like frantically whisking, okay? It gets really stretchy really quickly and it will burn if you don't whisk. All right, let's add it. Whoop. Ah! And so you want to whisk it for one more minute after you add the tapioca. Ah, so stretchy. Look at that. Mmm. Oh yeah, it looks like snot. So now you're going to turn your heat off and you're going to transfer your mixture to a glass container. And 
And once you get in the glass container, set it out a little bit, and you're gonna put it in the fridge for three hours. This is like a nice hot, soft cheese if you wanna keep it that way for like a dip or something and it's still good. But if you wanted to firm up and make it shreddable for pizza or make it like, like mozzarella clumps, I would put it in the fridge. You wanna put it in the fridge uncovered for three hours so the steam gets out. Now we're gonna make our pizza dough. Flower up your space, your workspace here. So you bring your bread back. You gently wake it up. Hello, sweetheart. Are you awake? Oh. And it has doubled in size, so it's ready to go. Oh yeah. So now what you do is you want to knead it like a couple times. Do a couple folds here. And then you become a professional pizza tosser. On TV and stuff, they kind of do like this. Hey, catch. Go far. Throw it up on the air a couple times. Put it on your head. Really stretch it out. I swear I'm kitchen safety certified. Let's do a couple spins. Woo! Do surgery on a hole you made. Do a couple more tricks. Oh! So you take your pan, you add some cornmeal. This really prevents it from sticking, but you can use flour too. This is just like extra grainy. I guess I'll make a little tiny crust for the aesthetic of it. To make a crust, you just fold over the corner like that. Okay. Put her there. Then you're gonna put tomato sauce on the crust. Fun fact I learned on Wikipedia, people in Europe used to be afraid of tomatoes because they thought it was toxic. And this rumor started, well, it wasn't a rumor, it was actually toxic because the arist aristocrats, aristocrats, <laughs> the aristocrats were eating all their foods on pewter bowls. And when you put tomatoes on pewter, tomatoes are really acidic and they extract the lead from the pewter. The lead goes into the tomatoes and people die of lead poisoning. But the way that tomatoes got destigmatized actually was that the proletariats of ancient Europe didn't eat on pewter anything because they were just regular Joe Schmoes. And they're like, what are these idiots talking about? Tomatoes aren't toxic. Thus the pizza was born. This isn't pewter, right? So I like to put my spices on underneath the cheese. Cause I'm just like different like that. This is garlic that I'm putting on. Just like swirl it around with your fingers. <laughs> yep. Yes, I did once cook for masses of people. <laughs> garlic, a little bit of pepper. Oregano. salt and then you're gonna grab your cheese Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. so this is not the cheese I just made I made it beforehand and I put it in the fridge like Rachel Ray style I swear to God I made it the exact same way as when I just did it I swear to God. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make our mozzarella slices. I just take a mason jar lid and I just go to town like you're making cookies. It's so cheesy, y'all. Yeah, you like it? It's the cheesiest one yet. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so yeah. 
You can shred this pretty easily too. Sometimes it comes out a little bit softer. It depends on like how perfectly you follow the recipe. So if it's like feeling too soft to shred, you can stick it in the freezer for a half hour and then shred it. And this cheese, you can keep it in the freezer and it will last however long you'd like it to. The batch of cheese I just made live in front of the camera, I'm actually gonna use to make mozzarella sticks in the next recipe. I'm gonna make Friendly's style mozzarella sticks and they're gonna be amazing. Okay, so you got your pizza basically made. This is, we're just going simple this time. So I'm gonna add some basil. If any humans out there are capable of making a basil stay alive, let me know because I've killed about nine of these plants. Chef's kiss, Mwah. Stick it in the oven. 475, like eight minutes, I think. While that's cooking, I do have an announcement for you all. So it's summertime and the term summer body and bikini body are gonna be arising in your newsfeed on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. People are gonna be talking about it. And it's a bunch of bullshit. The idea is that there's a specific body that is supposed to be best fit for wearing a bikini or showing your body on a beach. And it's terrible and it is fat phobic and I will not stand for it. But honestly, I did some research about the origins of the word summer body and bikini body. And I found out that it arose in the 50s or 40s um, in the United States. A weight loss company called Slenderella, which sounds like a terrifying love child of Cinderella and the Slender Man. But Slenderella created the term bikini body to make people feel shitty about their bodies and try to sell their products. That is capitalism at its finest and it's diet culture at its finest. I'm being ironic. I hope that was clear. It's really tough seeing that word in your social media or from friends and family. And I just wanna remind you all that if you have a body and it is summer, you have a summer body. If you have a body and you're in a bikini, you have a bikini body. And let's fight against diet culture. Voila! I'm gonna slide this pizza off here. Oh, it's so good. The pizza's so good. I can't, I can't even describe to you. this but thank you for joining me on food atheist clearly it doesn't matter what I say I'm gonna do at the end of the video because I do something completely different because accountability is hard for me but my current plan is is that I'm gonna make uh, Wendy's frosty and fries thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time bye